samples. Meanwhile, on the home front, the semi-finals of the Welsh Schools Cup took place this week. There's no doubt that the Lloyds TSB Schools League is beneficial to its participants. But what of those not involved? What kind of standards are they achieving? And how do they manage when they come up against their more fortunate peers? The answer? Very well, thank you. If you play for Cardinal Newman, that is. In this, the first semi-final of the Welsh Schools Cup, there was a popular misconception that Swansea College were favourites just because they are in the Lloyds TSB and their opponents are not. But Cardinal Newman's record speaks for itself this season. A 100% winning run in midweek fixtures, and all bar one of those victories have come against Lloyds TSB opposition. For the reasons why the Roman Catholic School isn't in the Lloyds TSB, tune into this programme over the next fortnight. But for now, suffice it to say that they were much the better side on Wednesday and will be a tough proposition in the final. Swansea College barely got out of their own territory in the first half and in the second they were unable to cope with the talents of Newman's back line, centre Kieran Phillips scoring here. In the line-out, Swansea were disappointing and that was even before they had one of their main jumpers sent off for punching. In contrast, Cardinal Newman looked dangerous every time they attacked, especially when fly-half Stuart Thomas, wearing 12, was involved. He was the instigator of this wonderful try for hooker Gareth Lawler. Swansea made something of a comeback in the last quarter, and I dare say they could have snatched it had they not been a man down. Despite a hard fought for score credited to substitute Jonathan Phillips, which took them to within six points, they only looked hungry towards the end, whereas Cardinal Newman had looked starving right from the kickoff. Final score Cardinal Newman 20, Swansea College 14. In the second semi final, Neath College already through to the final of the league playoffs hosted Eskol Tregib from Llandaila, who were in the same group as them in the Lloyds TSB Dragons Trust setup. And it was Neath who scored the game's first try. Good combined play involving forwards and backs cleared the way for Richard Morgan. And he crossed despite Tregib having three defenders there. The Tandalo side, though, battled back from 10-3 down with their first converted try. Centre, Aaron May, taking advantage of the nice bounce. And things got even better for Tregib when they took the lead with another converted score. Number eight, James Thomas, forces his way over. 17-16 at half-time to Tregib. That lead was extended to 2016 when Daniel Zamid kicked a penalty. But then Llandailo had to work overtime as Neath pressed hard for their second try. Nathan Brew, so unlucky to miss out on the trip to the Youth World Cup in France with Wales, couldn't quite make it. And again, Neath were held up just short as they kept it tight. In the end, though, the pressure just had to tell. Number eight, Tim Clark, forces his way over. 23-20 to Neath with a conversion. And the college wrapped it up with one more try before the end. The forward drive took them into the Tregib 22. And then they spread the ball wide for full-back Gary Jones to cross. The final takes place at the Millennium Stadium on May the 3rd be a good occasion and let's just remind you of our competition right yep squad of course well, a few weeks ago, we showed you the semi-finals of the Schools Cup and we promised to explain why one of the finalists, Cardinal Newman, are not in the Lloyds TSB Saturday League. Well, with the final against Neath College only a few days away, we've found that the reasons for their absence are threefold. Logistics, manpower and resources. 
Cardinal Newman School in Tridvelin near Pontypridd is bucking the trend in schools rugby by not participating in the Saturday morning league. It's a serious step for such a quality rugby side. It's difficult for a school like ours. Uh, we are not a local school. It's a church school, it's a Catholic school. We have children from a very wide catchment area. Um, getting them to school on Saturdays is a problem. More critically, I suppose, is the role of my members of staff. Uh, my head of P, Andy McCann. Uh, he spends all his lunch times working. He works after school uh, four nights a week. And to ask him to work on Saturday mornings, I think, would not be a satisfactory thing to do. It would either lead to burnout or it would lead to uh, a reduction in the quality of P across the rest of the curriculum. The school is fortunate to get help with coaching from former Ireland international Jerry McLaughlin, whose sons are in the team. Tremendous personality and he gives us unfailing support. He comes and coaches at lunch times, uh, he comes and coaches after school and during holiday times. Uh, he's a great source of strength and inspiration both to the school and also to our players. We would love to be in the league. If we could increase our staffing, we would be in the league. I have no doubt about it. We have beautiful fields here, but they're terribly poorly trained. Uh, we haven't been able to play a fixture at home all season. Uh, we're very, very lucky. We've got very good relationship with local clubs, and especially with Velling Rugby Club, who are very close to us. You know, it is, it's just negative, really. You know, we can't, the backs especially, can't do what they want to do. And we've got a good flowing set of backs. And, uh, it's difficult for them to get the balls, the balls moving when they're wet, to, to get their moves going. You know, it's just difficult getting fluid movements going. They've worked hard, you know, with all the facilities that they've got or haven't got, I should say, in the school. And the boys have been committed throughout through the uh, the winter and done exceptionally well to get this far. The boys just want to enjoy the day. Um, you know, they're going to the Millennium Stadium, playing in a fantastic arena, and it'll be a fantastic day, so really they just want to enjoy it. If they win, that'll be fantastic, but uh, it'll be a big battle. We're all really looking forward to playing the stadium, you know, we do have a World Cup final there. You know, South Africa played in New Zealand, Australia, you know, all the great teams who are around at the moment have played there. And you know, now we're going to be playing the Cardinal New one sort of thing, so it's, uh, it's just an amazing achievement for us. Well, the school's day is at the Millennium Stadium next Wednesday. Not a bad place to be. Three games to see there, and the first kicking off at ten, uh, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Well, there's also uh, rather a big game next Saturday.
How does this day compare with some of your great ones, Jerry? Well, I think I, I've forgotten all the rest of them after today, I must say. Especially when we we're so close to all the boys who played, you know, we know them all for the last five or six years very, very intimately. And um, we knew that, um, you know, that for their sake, we were thrilled that, um, you know, they put the work in and how they've achieved the success, you know. You must be very proud of your two boys. Yeah, you know, it's, as I say, it's a team effort, like, you know what I mean? And uh, everyone blended in, all age groups, because Emma's just 15, 16. And Shannon's 17, but we've other lads out there as well, like, you know, who are very, very young, like, you know, there's 11 this team available again next year. So, as I said, they're all good rugby players and they'll even have their head and um, do the basics well, and that's all they've done today, you know. It was enough. Did you ever think that two of your sons would actually play in this stadium in, in, in a Welsh schools final? Well, I've been in Wales now for 13 years and I, I've always been involved in, with the Welsh schools, with, with St Michael's initially, because half these boys are from St Michael's Catholic School, the other half are from St Helens and Caffilly. And um, I've been with the boys all, all, all my life since I come to Wales, and we've always, with Andy and myself, we've always tried our best, like just to let them enjoy the, the rugby. You know, things have been good always, like. But um, uh, you know, we always thought, I always thought, ten years ago, that this team are capable of something. You know, the boys are capable because they've got heart and they've got rugby brains. And uh, as I said, like you know, let them have, leave them have their um, their go and they'll do the business. Well done, Well done. Thank you. Andy, what about the contribution of people like this fellow on your left? Well, we're lucky, really. Jerry's contributed greatly, but so have all the other parents of the 24 boys that we've got in the squad. Um, since we found out that we'd be in the final after beating Swansea College, uh, the boys have wanted to train three times a week right through the holidays. And being a Catholic school, you know, they've got to get there somehow because they come from tremendous distances. So a lot of parents have contributed, um, you know, with lifts and taxis. Jerry's expertise and enthusiasm then has sort of brought us here as well. It's quite a fairy story really, isn't it? It is a fairy story and today should be about the boys because they've done well to win. I am slightly disappointed that some of these players haven't had more days like this. Uh, we haven't had any Welsh selectors watching our team play at all this season. Um, and I feel a bit disappointed for the boys. It's worked in our favour today because they did have a point to prove. Um, but I do think the system could be looked at a little better. Uh, we're not in the TSB League, that's been covered. Um, if we can get a bit of support uh, in terms of manpower uh, to the school, either through the WRU or through uh, educational uh, means, then we would certainly look at it. Um, you know, but at the moment, today should be about the boys, and they've done very well. They certainly have, and on the point of uh, West Selectors not coming to see them, how many of these players would you have expected to be in contention, maybe, for a place? Well, in the, in the last three games, we've played five or six um, current Welsh jersey holders and I would have thought in, out of each player we've played we, we've given them a good game and they should have been looked at in positions from front row right the way through. Um, Fiona has been playing for Welsh youth but in terms of the school's setup we've got no one involved. But uh, success today must surely uh, success, put, put, put that on the back burner of the time. It has. We, we, we've done our homework. To be fair, we were lucky we, we had our semi-final before Neath College had theirs. Uh, and as a team, Jerry and I, we went down with the boys to watch that. We did our homework on them very well, I think. Uh, the boys stuck to a game plan. We did go out with a definite game plan. Uh, we had two players uh, who were play making their debut for our first team today. Uh, they've never played, they've never played uh, with these boys before but we thought for today they would be better suited. And they, again, were 15, 16 years old, not the, you know, not the 18 year old boys that we could have chosen from. Uh, I would like to thank the boys who got us here, uh, who missed out on today as well. Uh, similarly, if it's possible to mention, we've got a young lad who's eligible for the first team next year, who's very seriously ill in hospital at the moment, Stephen Duffin, 
and the boys you know, were thinking of him as well as we prepared for today's game so I can visit him in hospital with some good news. And from your point of view, and he, everybody said, sparing, not sparing your blushes, uh, it's obviously it's a lot of work for one person uh, in this sort of setup. It must mean a lot to you personally. It means a, a tremendous amount to me. Um, there are times where I'm refereeing two rugby matches a night after school, you know, three or four nights a week. Um, and if there's any help available, as you know, obviously I've accepted it from Jerry, I wouldn't turn anybody down. Um, any coaches or any help from the WRU, a school like ours needs it. And it'll be all the good for Welsh rugby if we get it.
Marlon Quinn's next Saturday. Well, last week we told you how Cardinal Newman had reached the final of the Lloyd's TSB Schools Cup, which was unusual because the school doesn't play in a league. But that didn't seem to count against them as they played their big match at the Millennium Stadium on Wednesday, alongside the under-14 and 16 finals. Hughes, a spectator at the WIU semi-finals after winning our competition, lined up for Duravelin in the under-14 final against Corpus Christi of Cardiff. The Neath youngsters showed terrific maturity and no little skill as they gained a well-deserved victory over their physically bigger opponents, flanker Chris Beck with their first try. Duravelin managed to put together some outstanding movements. Number eight, Scott Jeremy with this athletic run. Just look at the intelligent and disciplined approach of the youngsters here. Hooker Gareth Wassell with the next pop. And Richard Emmett scores with the long range finish so beloved by props of all ages. Now I know the modern ball is more user friendly these days, but this was still quite some kick by Matthew Myatt. The centre wearing the number one shirt because the number 12 didn't fit. Our boy Philip Hughes got involved in the next score, shoveling out the pass to left wing Stephen Carpenter, who showed he could shift a bit. Matthew Myatt then moved in to play scrum half. Versatile, these number ones, aren't they? And he claimed try number four in exuberant style. Cardiff youngsters deserved something for their efforts though and they were rewarded with a late try. Hooker James Walby striking another blow for the front row union. At the end though a deserved victory for a proud rugby school. A fantastic experience for the youngsters and a really great start to the day. Moving on up to the next age group, Bryn Teg took on Mountain Ash in the under-16 final and the Bridgend boys showed irresistible form as they chalked up an eight try to one victory. <laughs> Centre Jamie Jones was one of their outstanding performers with two touchdowns. You could hardly believe the way Bryn Teg managed to play such rugby when they were taken apart in the scrums. Outside half, Mark David with one of the highlights of the whole day's entertainment. Brintig led 22-0 at half-time before Jamie Jones rubbed salt in the mountain ash wounds with his second try. Number eight, Chris Davis was another of Brintig's stars on the day up to try number six with another individual effort. 
but this was essentially a team effort. Could support play the order of the day? Adam Whitney takes advantage of some tired defenders. Grintig, the under-16 champions. Then came the big moment for the boys of Cardinal Newman. They had spent most of their half-term week preparing for their game against Neath College, who were looking for the first half of a double with a league final to come later in the month. Former Irish international prop Jerry McLaughlin, now living in Gilvach Goch, helped prepare a side that included his two sons, Fionn and Emmett. Darren Pittard gets it away to Michael Hook for Neath, then into Matthew Dunn in midfield. Hit the ball breaks for Stuart Thomas on the Cardinal Newman side. Fionn McLaughlin, good pace, wearing 15, playing it outside half today though. Oh, should have passed out. There was a chance on there for a try. The pickup is by Stuart Thomas. Allen, can his forwards drive him over? Yes, the try's awarded. Thomas converted and kicked two penalties as Cardinal Newman built up a 13-3 lead by half-time. Owen Williams, the captain for Nathan. And I'm sure that Donald Jones gave his side a little talking to at half-time. Much more purpose, in fact, about their play now. It's done again. And on the angle goes John Lyshen. Powerful right winger, Stuart Thomas back. Can't hold him up, though. Neath with their first try of the game. Well, so much more purpose now about this Neath outfit. Oh, good players in their lineup. Now with a chance to spread it again. Good support play. Now out wide to Gary Jones wearing 17. Really does well. The support is up too. And it's Darren David, the flanker, who gets the touchdown. Neath then led 2016 when the Pontypridd side had one more chance with time beginning to run out. A lot of pressure then from Cardinal Newman. Another penalty for them. Again, they opt to take it quickly and spread it out wide. And it's Chris Thomas, brother of Stewart, who gets the drive. Very much a family affair, this. It's a superb kick by Stuart Thomas. Dad David, the former Cardiff wing, will have enjoyed that. As hard as Neath tried, they failed to breach the Cardinal Newman defence again, and the final whistle heralded a huge celebration. Today should be about the boys because they've done well to win. I am slightly disappointed that some of these players haven't had more days like this. Uh, we haven't had any Welsh selectors watching our team play at all this season. Um, and I feel a bit disappointed for the boys. It's worked in our favour today because they did have a point to prove. Um, but I do think the system could be looked at a little better. Uh, we're not in the TSB League, that's been covered. Um, if we can get a bit of support uh, in terms of manpower uh, to the school, either through the WRU or through uh, educational uh, means, then we would certainly look at it. It means a, a tremendous amount to me. Um, there are times where I'm refereeing two rugby matches a night after school, you know, three or four nights a week. Um, and if there's any help available, I wouldn't turn anybody down. Um, any coaches or any help from the WRU, a school like ours needs it. You must be very proud of your two boys. Yeah, you know, it's... As I say, it's a team effort, like, you know what I mean? And uh, everyone blended in, all age groups, because Emma's just 15, 16, and Sean is 17. But we've other lads out there as well, like, you know, who are very, very young, like, you know, there's 11 of this team available again next year. So, as I said, they're all good rugby players, and they'll even have their head and um, do the basics well, and that's all they've done today, you know? We've got a young lad who's eligible for the first team next year, who's very seriously ill in hospital at the moment, Stephen Duffin. And the boys, you know, were thinking of him as well as we prepared for today's game so I can visit him in hospital with some good news. And of course, our best wishes go to uh, Stephen Duffin and hope he has a speedy recovery. More action featuring our top talent takes place at the Millennium Stadium next weekend with three more finals, two youth at under 17 and 19 level with the League Cup final sandwiched in between. That all starts at 11 o'clock.
Well, the selectors might not have been watching, but we've enjoyed watching it, haven't we? Haven't Fantastic. We? An inspired decision by the WRU to hold all three finals at the Millennium Stadium. I was in Cardiff, uh, city centre, on my way somewhere else, and I got trampled by about 4,000 4, kids. Screaming kids. Uh, and they weren't your fans? No. Uh, <laughs> or my own, either. Uh, and they thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and that's what it's all about, inspiring these kids so that they can go on and fulfil their dream in, who knows, four, five, maybe even ten years' time. They could be playing for a league side. Let's turn our attention to the league next week.